I think we stopped at this particular command right here. Um, how we actually put the atoms of the system into a box right of a given region right this is where we stop if I remember right after that what we do is we essentially have to assign one of the most important things that you have to give uh, properties that you have to give uh, your atoms is the mass of the atom so you say mass that atom type so there are only there is only one type of atom in the system which is basically the argon atom so you say mass 1 and the corresponding mass of the system in uh, mass units for this units that you have specified which is going to be in grams per mole okay, you can find all this information uh, uh, in standard places right um, once you have specified the mass we specify the interatomic potential the manner in which the various atoms in the system have to interact so like i mentioned mm -hmm. we are talking about a noble we are talking about argon okay noble gas but of course we are going to um, uh, not look at the, this its behavior at higher temperatures now we have constructed argon as fcc fcc using fcc lattice treating it as if it were a solid maybe at extremely low temperatures it behaves as a solid but that, that is just used for uh, explaining this input file okay pair style is given as pair style is basically the keyword and what is the type of the pair style interaction so in this case i have used lj slash cut so lj is obviously uh, for leonard jones uh, but this is actually an important keyword and therefore we can actually take a look at the um, manual for this particular command so pair style style so what is what are the various styles and they can be a huge list here okay and uh, the various arguments that are required for a particular style so for example if it is lj slash cut you should follow it by the corresponding number which talks about the cutoff distance that you want to give for this particular potential and i think i have chosen something like 10 or something uh, for just illustration purposes i have given 10 it's always all distances are in angstrom okay and what are the various pair styles available there is a huge lift the, uh, list that is there right below okay huge list the various kinds of pair interactions that you can actually specify in labs in lj itself if you take a look at it you have um, various different types right for example if you say lj Coulomb cut that means you have to give there is a, there is a LJ interaction for the uh, uh, nuclear interactions between the atoms in addition to that you can also give Coulombic interactions existing between the atoms and you can give separate cutoffs for the LJ potential and separate cutoffs for the Coulombic interaction okay so in this manner uh, you specify the pair style interaction between the atoms or you are specifying what type of potential that you are going to use. So next you specify for this particular pair style the coefficient so while you have specified that you are going to use the LJ interatomic potential you have not yet specified what parameters you are going to use in order to model this LJ potential basically the values of epsilon and a sigma okay. So in LAMPS you specify this sort of interaction using this pair underscore coefficient so basically the coefficients for this pair style interaction okay and these are the atom types between which you want to have this interaction okay so one and one between one type atom of type one and atom of type one you want to have these interactions so if you have argon plus krypton plus xenon each of them could be uh, of their specific types and you could specify one two interaction and one three interaction and so on okay the first in the, no, no, well you can do it in the same command or you can do it in uh, subsequent lines as well okay i will just show you something in just a minute okay you can do different things here so this uh, for example if i replace this one with star star it means that for all possible pair interactions use these potentials okay 
then if I use something like uh, if there are four different types of uh, atoms in your system, if I do that, there is some okay. Let's let's come to that when we do. I don't want to talk about it now. So there are different ways you can give these interactions, and uh, there are e uh, ways by which you can do this very quickly, even if there are many different atom types. Okay, so uh, the first coefficient will essentially be the um, uh, sigma value sorry the first first thing will be the uh, epsilon value uh, So this is the potential that we are looking at. Epsilon and sigma are the two things that we have to specify here, right? So the epsilon value is the first thing that you specify in energy units, and is next is sigma. Okay, and right below that you see a sentence which is very important. The sigma that is defined here in LJ, uh, defined in the LJ formula, is the zero crossing of the potential. So the sigma is basically the distance at which the potential energy crosses 0 it is not the value at which the potential is actually a minima okay when you are specifying the value of um, a sigma right here so so and then you can specify cutoff distances for various things so in this case uh, in certain cases if you are using coulombic interaction in addition to the lj interaction like i just mentioned you can specify cutoff separately for the lj potential and another cutoff for the corresponding coulombic interactions now uh, you can obtain this uh, data for organ from various places uh, but i am actually uh, looking at one specific paper where several of these uh, um, where, where where a lot of uh, analysis has been done on various different uh, noble gases so i will just show you that paper and uh, we are going to do a lot of stuff from that paper in this class this is an important paper for this class so it talks about structure study of structural and transport properties of argon krypton and their binary mixtures at different temperatures so it's a very good uh, starting point to start learning some of these some of some aspects of md simulations with these simple uh, materials and you can try to reproduce some of the results that are there in this paper and i think that itself will be a very good exercise to learn these things uh, properly okay and uh, you can find the interaction potential in this particular table right here and they say the interaction between argon argon sigma is given as 0.33952 and if you observe carefully that is the value that i am using here as well okay 3.3952 and that's simply because they have a different units here in nanometers is what they have given but we are supposed to given angstroms so that's the reason and then here you have 116.79 and it is normalized by kb so therefore we have to multiply this number by kb in order to specify the value in electron volts for this epsilon Okay, so that is the way you specify the interaction. Now, this is a very simple interaction that we are talking about, uh, but for more complicated interactions, it is possible that you may have to specify them through, an, through some other file. Like for example, an embedded atom potential is not given to you in this explicit form. Okay, you have to read in a table of values uh, for the system that you are working with. And if you are talking about more complicated systems uh, such as the Tersoff potential, there are there are there, there is another way of defining the parameters. There are more number of parameters are there, and you have to specify them in the form of a table in another file, which will be read by this file. So for some potential, it's possible to specify the interatomic. For some uh, systems, it's possible to specify the interatomic potential parameters right here in the input script itself. Okay. So for for our case, this information is more than enough for argon krypton and all that but when we talk about solids when we talk about uh, uh, ceramics or metals these things can change a bit okay. then what i am going to do is i am going to group all the atoms that are belonging to one particular type into 
some set okay and you can do a lot of things with this with this uh, group command okay. so it's it's quite powerful so it's a good idea to take a look at that as well for example say you have a group uh, you want to you want to only print out the positions and the velocities of atoms for which the x coordinate is less than some value then it is possible to use the group command to put all the atom ids with with x coordinate less than a certain value into a specific group and then you know use that name that you just specified so if you looked at the group there is a name that i specified here it's called as a group id which is something that you give and you can use that value ar to uh, refer to it refer to that set of atoms somewhere later on in the script okay so all atoms of type 1 are given this name ar and there are different ways of actually specifying the group so this is the group command this is the group this is the id so ar in our case the style the style can be one of these right so my style was type okay i'm going to group the type but you can also group it based on the id of the atom okay and you can use all sorts of logical operators to say if id is greater than this and less than this put all these atoms in a group you can do all such things with the group command so uh, for simple cases these things might seem uh, not so useful but when you are doing real simulations and when you want to um, uh, group certain you can group certain set of atoms in a simulation box and run a different simulation on those atoms when compared to uh, the others okay so when you want to do such things it becomes extremely useful to use this group command so um, then so for example if you do this group sub sub is the name of the group by id so from 100 to 10000 every 10 ids you put it in a group so all these things um, help you actually do a lot of the post processing right here in the input script okay uh, you may not be able to see it right now but um, it's a good idea to remember this group command before doing writing any explicit code by yourself to actually do analysis then uh, there is a command called time step so we are obviously solving these equations of motion numerically and we have to specify a time step and i am specifying a time step as 0 0.001 and what units it is it is in picoseconds picoseconds is the standard units for the units that we have chosen here which is the metal units okay so 0 0.001 picoseconds which is 1 2 3 1 femtosecond is the time step that i am going to use now this can be changed as and when you need so if you want to increase the time step for some other runs you can later on specify another time step followed by the corresponding uh, value that you want to use now this is an important command which is dump okay dump means dump the values literally so write the values into a output text file okay now this is a keyword this is a dump id okay if you want to refer to it at a, at, at a point later on in the script all means all the atoms in the system that is a default group that is present in lamps so you don't have to say uh, you don't have to explicitly put all the atoms into a group called all the group all already exists so all the atoms and then you specify the manner in which you want to print out information into a output file so in this in this case i am going to use a customized i am going to say what i want to print i want to uh, i want lamps to print out into a file say so i use the i use the key i use the uh, style custom and i say every step during the simulation uh, print out the information and dump underscore min is basically the file into which I want to write the information and what information do I want to write? I want to write the id, I want to write out the type of the atom, the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the z coordinate and then something called as ix, iy, iz which basically is going to tell me in which uh, periodic image 
my atom is actually located for whatever reason that might be useful later on in my analysis. For example, I when we run this we will see what this means. So, right now uh, you just understand that this is going to be either 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and so on like that. So, it is going to tell you uh, if this is your main box if an atom actually had moved to this box it is going to tell you that the image flag for that particular atom is going to be 1 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction and 0 in the z direction. Okay. So, uh, and then v x, v y, v z are obviously the velocities of the atoms. Okay. So, uh, dump 1 is the dump id. So, everything has a id in lamps. So, just like how you have group, group id, right? to refer to that group somewhere later on in the file in a similarly you have dump dump id so that you want to refer to that dump you want to say for example dump keep dumping but then you want to also have a line which says stop dumping information here so how will you refer to the dump through its dump id you say undump dump id it will stop writing information to that particular uh, uh, file okay the actual, name of the, file is dump the actual name of the file into which it uh, puts information is the dump dot main. So, now the dump is now evolved a lot. I mean, a lot of things can be you can dump it in various different formats, you can dump it in a movie format, you can dump the uh, position of all the atoms in an image format and just take a look at the PNG file or the JPG file as a function of time. Okay. Uh, previously, we had to like do other things to actually take a look at it. So, this is our, the, the one that I am using here is the old, the old style. So, we just use dump the corresponding dump id, what group id you want to dump. So, basically we defined a group called ar you remember, but now I am just putting all, but you can I can also put ar and I will get the same information. Okay. Then what style, how in what format do I want to print out the information. So, I have chosen custom, okay. custom okay. and then how frequently I want to print it out, n, the name of the file and the corresponding arguments. The arguments list of arguments, uh, the list of arguments for a particular style. So, if I am doing custom, it can be a lot of stuff. So, it can be all these things. Okay, ID that I am printing out the corresponding uh, XYZ information, the box image that the atom is in, the corresponding velocities of the atom, the corresponding forces on the atoms, charge on the atoms, and then anything else that I may have computed using something called as a compute command, all these things can be printed out and this, this dump command does the job for information that is related to per atom, okay. whereas the thermo command does stuff that is related to the entire simulation box for many atoms together such as the pressure or the volume or the temperature and things like that. Okay, so, there is a, there are two outputs that will come out of lamps like we mentioned one is a log file and the other one is this dump file right both of which both, both of which you can control what you want to print and how frequently you want to print. The log file generally contains information for the entire system whereas the dump is per atom information. Okay, so, that is the way this dump works. This thing I have given one. but Remember, this is these simulations are all for practical purposes. When they are actually used in research, they are they all run for days and months and things like that. Okay, and uh, uh, careful thought has to be given how frequently you want to print out information, especially especially things like the positions and the velocities of all the atoms in the system. So, if you have a simulation which comprises of a million atoms. So, and you say and you are running it for say um, 10 picoseconds and you are using a time step of 1 femtosecond and you imagine if you say print every step the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the z coordinate, the velocities of all the atoms in the system, the size of your dump will just be so large, right, it will, be, it will go to gigabytes. And it, it can be extremely hard for you to post process that anyways, you have to write a post processing code to read it that itself will take a long time. So, you have to be careful how frequently you want this information to be dumped and a lot of, a lot of um, 
analysis has to be done to set up your input file so that it does things in an optimal manner and that can actually be a difficult task before you run your actual simulation you might have spent a significant fraction of time in figuring out how to do it uh, optimally for your uh, system okay so be careful about using this number one be careful about using this time step because if you give it if you are making it extremely small then the number for a, for a given time you will have to run it for a larger number of steps right and and your system may not need such a small time step so you have to perform several trial runs before you actually figure out what what time steps and what how how long you have to actually run your system okay Sir, yeah in, in, instead of one i use five ah so uh, will it show the ids for uh, fifth tenth fifteenth uh, like that uh, I, yes so if i every so many time steps right so if i change this to five it is going to print that information every five time steps so it will start It will start from the first one that is it, it is it is seeing, and then the sixth plus five, sixth one, eleventh one, and so on. So then I just said run run one. Okay, this is a very important command which basically tells you how many steps do you want to run with the settings that you have just done above this line. Okay, right now I haven't done much. Right. What did I do? Is there anything that is important here? I've specified the pair style. I've specified a group. I've specified a time step, and I said just dump, and I just said run one. Okay, what is it going to run? Is a question that 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 should be that you should be curious about. It is not going to run anything at this point. Okay, because we haven't told how the atoms are. We haven't told it something that is extremely crucial yet. We'll come to that in a bit. I just wanted to introduce the run command. Run followed by the total number of steps you want to run it. Okay. Minimize is a command that is used to actually minimize the energy of the system. So your atoms might be, for the current case, I have all the atoms are placed in their equilibrium position. So for argon, it so happens that at some low temperature, the the equilibrium lattice constant is 4.58, and it takes FCC structure. So um, they are all at its they are all at their equilibrium positions. And if I do a energy minimization, there's not much is going to happen. However, if you have displaced these atoms a little bit randomly, if you have placed these atoms a little bit randomly and perform an energy minimization, it will just take the potential energy, minimize the energy, and bring the atoms to their equilibrium position so that the total force on the on each atom and total energy of the system is kind of minimized. Okay, so the minimize command takes in four different arguments. So it takes in Now, what is the, what should be the? As it is minimizing, it will keep calculating its energy and the forces, right? So between the previous iteration and the current iteration, what do you want the difference in the energies or the forces to be before I can stop performing this energy minimization? Okay. And obviously, you also want to specify how many times do you want to try each of these. So these are the number of iterations, one for energy and the other for force, and these are the uh, tolerances. that i am willing to accept for the energy and for the force okay now <clears throat> this is just a print command so i just said finished minimizing you have to put it in quotes but you can have all sorts of variables and other things here to um uh to guide you in your uh, analysis so then is thermostyle command thermostyle basically tells you the um what do you want to print out in the log file so like i told you log file prints information of the entire system and i say custom means something that i want not the default thing that lamps prints so that's that's what the custom style is about so i wanted to print the step number i wanted to print the actual time i wanted to print the temperature of the system potential energy the total energy the pressure and the volume so how do i know these keywords so you go to the manual so style custom custom the list of keywords so these are the various things that you can actually print out 
okay, how much time has elapsed, okay, then the time step that you are using, all these things can actually be printed out. And these are the keywords that you need to use for that, um, you can't use something else. So, this precisely tells you if you want the total energy, you need to use uh, E total right here. Okay, And all the, the, uh, the entire list is explained, what, what each of the short forms mean is explained right here. Okay. And then I want to introduce a command called velocity in which see one of the most important things in molecular dynamics simulations is you have given the initial positions to all the atoms because we know our crystal structure, we know the space group, so we know the positions of all the atoms. However, to start performing the integrations or integrating the equations of motion, you also need the initial velocities and it makes sense to give something that um, it, it, it's obviously um, required that you give something that makes sense. The velocities are related to the temperature, right? So, it is a good idea to actually assign velocities to all the atoms of the system so that it reflects a specific temperature, okay? So, what I am going to do here is I am going to say velocity for the group all, that means all the atoms create such that the temperature of the system is 300 Kelvin and give some random seed, okay? And distribute the velocities in a Gaussian manner. Distribute the velocities in a Gaussian manner, okay? So, if you take a look at the input file, sorry, okay, not bad. Velocity group ID style args keyword value. So, create, okay, I am going to give a temperature followed by seed, a random seed because it is randomly going to assign the velocities uh, in a, in any, some distribution that I want. So, I am going to give it a certain distribution. The distribution is either uniform or Gaussian. I am going to give a Gaussian distribution of the velocities in the x, y and the z directions so that the temperature of the system is 300 Kelvin the instantaneous, the set temperature of the system is 300 Kelvin, okay, but it is not necessary that um, the equilibrium value of temperature that it takes is going to be 300 Kelvin, okay, different things can happen as we will see in the next example, okay. So, this is a random seed, it can be some number, some integer. So, I am going to print the thermo information every step. So, thermo 1 tells that I am going to print the thermo information every step. And then I am going to define arbitrarily another variable just, just for the heck of it. Variable t equals time means this time, this time is actually a lamps keyword telling me the time. For example, I use that word here, right, to print out the time, right. I am just using that here, okay, and I can print it out if I want. Then I say run dollar step and step was actually a variable that was defined way before and I said variable step equal 100 and if I see here I am going to say run dollar step. So, you can you can imagine that this number of steps that you are going to run can be altered based on various formula depending upon uh, your time step or how long in reality you, re you want to actually run the simulation. Okay. So, run dollar step will run it for how many steps right now 100 steps and then I stop dumping to this file okay, and then I print some information I just print some information. So, let us see what happens when I run this file are there any questions on these basic commands which one? Huh. Uh, you, can you can define many things, yes. Just like putting, just like putting just like? Just like Python or something. So no, 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 it, it's not like, it's not like that. So, it, this command says that, say for example, if you look at this command, it says that STP is a variable which is equal to 100. That's all. You can use STP in other places like this. 
okay now this is a variable of type equal this equal is actually a lamps uh, option now there are several other things that are available there is a loop variable okay then there is a python variable which means whatever is coming after it can be a python code that you can run okay all that all that is also possible here that is the only command no no there are many other ways to this is this is not doing much now the, what this is doing now is it is changing the velocities of it, it is giving velocities to each and every atoms of the atom in the system such that the average temperature of the system is 300 kelvin that's all it is doing for the at that instant at that when it starts At what temperature energy is calculated for this? What, uh, at, at the instant, uh, for the instance that I gave, it should be 300 Kelvin. But as the velocities evolve <coughs> with time, the temperature of the system will change, right? Yes, exactly. But you will see here, that is what I think you are just going a little bit ahead. So, I will run this and we will see what happens. Okay, I am running it. So, I am going to give the input script dot in. So, it is running. It ran and it is done. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, not all practical simulations can be done so quickly. Okay. So, uh, it prints out something, right? It is printing out something. It is This is the same information that it will print out even in the log file. Okay. Uh, so, it is a good idea to actually redirect that to a output file. If you know Linux, then you will know what it means to redirect the output of a command to an output file. It's done. Then you don't have these things running in your screen, okay? Especially when you're running long, long, long simulations. Now let us take a look at the following things. Your lamp file. This is the input script. So these are the only things that will actually remain in your folder. The dump min, which is basically the file that the dump is printing out. The log file, which is basically the log file, which we have defined inside the input script. We said log space log file dot txt. So write down that all the log information in the log file. Okay, and then output dot txt is just the redirect of the um, the command, right? Now let us take a look at maybe dump dot min first. So the dump dot min looks like this. So it says that the time step is zero. Number of atoms is four thousand. The box bounds. That means x low, x high, y low, y high, z low, z high is between four and four point five eight, which is what we have given there. Forty five point eight. Right, you remember we gave 0 to 45.8, 0 to 45.8, that is what is reflected here, and then atoms id that is this is the atom uh, id, the first one is atom id, then is the atom type, the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the z coordinate, then the image flag in which that particular atom is located, and the corresponding velocities of that atom. Okay, now First, you see all are zeros because that is the first dump min did not. Um, the velocity was not set that time, right? Then, no, no, it will not assume. It will assume zero. If you do not give velocities, it will see this is not a valid sensible input file to do anything practical. This is an input file to introduce commands. Okay. The next input file that will uh, that I will talk about will run some simulations. Now, by now you should have realized that something weird is happening. So, I will what is happening is all of you will expect that the atoms are actually now vibrating when I ran it. I ran it for 100 steps. You are expecting the atoms to actually vibrate, right? I gave it some initial velocity, but 
so so uh, let me complete going through the dump file so the dump file after some time begins to have values for the corresponding velocities because we have initialized it for some velocity and all these numbers will be exactly the same for example in step number okay this is step number uh, 101 the atom id 44 is having some weird velocity here okay if you look at the subsequent step also it should have only the same velocity okay so 44 so just try to keep just try to remember these patterns i mean i can't you can't remember this now so 0.18 0.65 and 0.45 so if you go to the next step exactly the same value okay from the time it started to now it is having actually the exactly the same value and when did it start it started when i defined the velocity and the after that after that instance only the dump will now contain the velocity until then although the dump was defined before so dump dump was defined where after that it was defined here no it was defined here right time step dump i think that is where i define the dump but the velocity is defined here right so until here it is just going to print whatever velocity it has but after this it is going to continue to uh, append the information with that velocity information okay so keep that in mind so although the dump is defined there and um, the velocities are defined here the run is defined down so this dump is going to still that dump on tag is still there so it is whatever for whatever settings i have done before the run all that is going to be executed if you don't want to be executed you should stop you should use some command to stop it okay just keep that in mind so that's what the dump file will contain and usually we use that to post process our results look at the atoms which i will show you in a bit then the log file the txt will first contain actually the input script itself okay and then you see a warning here which is the most important warning you don't have a fix defined so your atoms will not move okay it will not move so and then you have the first whenever you are seeing a step command then it essentially means that you have printed out some thermodynamic information there so the thermodynamic information that we have asked it to print is um here time temperature potential energy total energy pressure volume this step that it is printing out is for the minimization step that we requested remember we asked it to do some minimization so this is the step where it is trying to minimize it is by default plotting the pair potential energy the um, molecular energy and the total energy and the pressure of the system okay and then it is going to talk about what is the stopping criterion okay the energy tolerance and all the inf information that you have given and then the final value that it got so the f based on the force the initial and the final are 2.968278 e to the minus 13 and 2.948 Zero one e to the minus thirteen, so they both are apparently differing only by the amount that we have requested. So it has stopped. Similarly, uh, the values of the energies are are also given here. They're pretty small. Okay, and then there is actually uh, the stopping criterion is energy tolerance. So which means that. Um, uh, it stopped based on your energy tolerance criteria rather than force tolerance or the number of iterations that you have given okay because minimize consisted of what it consisted of the tolerance for the energy tolerance for the force number of iterations for the energy number of iterations for the force so it is telling you on what criteria i actually stopped minimizing the function okay so this is the first part where some output is written concerning your simulation so it is finished doing that so it says finished minimizing is something that we have printed out after the minimize command so it is printing it out here print print finished minimizing okay finished minimizing 
then I am starting to do, I set the initial velocities okay, and then I am running 100 steps and this is the information that it is actually printing out for the 100 steps. It gives you the first line of before this table, it tells you the step, the time, the temperature of the system, the potential energy, the total energy, pressure, volume. So the, the temperature is 300 exact. For all the 100 steps, every step, temperature is exactly 300 and potential energy, total energy, pressure, volume are all 300. It is calculating the pressure and all volume is obviously the volume of the simulation box. This is the content of the log file. And these are the files that you will often need in order to see if your simulation, simulation is going, making sense. Huh. Uh, we gave a run one. You see, you gave a run one. Zero. The velocities are zero. So the first down, the first. Um, Velocities are all zero. Even the last. Oh, in the in the input script that I gave you, the velocity command is not there, so it will be zero always. But in the command, the, in, since I modified it this morning and I added a velocity command to actually, uh, I chose to explain this today, so that's why it's you don't have. Um, why don't you add a velocity command? This is coming now. If you add a velocity, command, it's running. Why don't you all add a velocity command and run the simulation? So, if you don't want the body to have any velocity as a whole, the center of mass of the system should remain fixed. Static. Yes. We have to ensure that. Yes. So, if we do not give that MRMS command, the velocities of the atoms may evolve with time and simultaneously the center of mass may also start uh, moving. It could happen. It could happen. But in this case, we are just giving the velocity for one instance. We haven't yet evolved it because like I mentioned, we don't have an integrator. Okay. Yes, that is an important step. Something is wrong? Something is coming. I mean, it's not zero. That's all you can check. You can't, you, otherwise, you will have to now perform the calculation to see if it is 300. But we can trust that it will be 300. It will correspond to a 300 Kelvin temperature only. Okay. So, is it sample? Yes, because you said this Gaussian. In the current exercise, if you looked at the log file, you see that there is a warning. It says that no fixes are defined, atoms won't move. Okay. So, even though you prescribed initial velocities and initial positions, if I looked at the atoms in say OB2, I will show you that maybe for today, which is a simple thing to do. So let's open OB2 and then let's just drag and drop our dump min here. When you drag and drop dumb min here on the lower um, right hand side, you can see that this uh, veto is actually reading each and every frame that's actually been printed out into the dump file. So it is basically reading the, the positions of all the atoms that's in the system, and this is our actual system. This is the system, this is what this is the system that was created by the lattice command, and they are printing out all the uh, positions and the velocities and all that. And you can see there is a little bit of gap here. Not to worry, there is not anything serious. It's just that if you repeat this in the right hand side on the top, it basically is going to repeat as a periodic image. So you should not have an atom at the lower right hand side corner. If you do, then it means you are overlapping two atoms. 
Okay, please remember that. Okay, there's always this gap will appear. It's not wrong. It reads all this and then you can play it and then look at how atoms are moving. If at all they move, in this case they're not going to move. Uh, but the main reason as to why that is happening is, although we define initial positions and velocities, we then start integrating the equations of motion. Right? We need to perform an integration of the equations of motion. The specifying initial velocities and initial position is not going to do anything. So, the first integrator that we will learn is an NBE integrator. So, it's just a simple solution of the Newton's equations of motion and it will update the positions and velocities as a function of time. Okay. So, we will do that in the next class.